our today's topic is fair value measurement so here we will discuss about uh, the principles to measure fair values then uh, what are the methods of measuring fair values what are the uses of fair value like uh, where in financial statements we use fair value methods and then what are the disclosures related to fair value measurements let's move on the definition of fair value let's read it out fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants in principal or most advantageous market at the measurement date under current market conditions so the main point here is would be received to sell that is this means that uh, this is fair value is an exit price exit price means at how much your asset will be sold not at how much you will purchase the asset right then the second second main point is orderly transaction between market participants what does this means orderly transaction means uh, a, like between market participants not that is no related parties so if it is between related parties then it is not considered an uh, orderly transaction also it should be an independent so if there is no related party that means it is an independent transaction then in the principal or most advantageous market so what is the difference between principal or most advantageous is principal market is where <coughs> where uh, the volume of asset your volume of security your whatever you are uh, dealing with is the most like uh, like it is purchased or sold mostly in that market and most advantageous market where you get the value of asset basically highest value that would be an advantageous market and then at measurement date under current market conditions next point is fair value is an exit price this is I, this i have already told you then um, market participants are buyers and sellers who are independent so no relation this means no relation then the principal market is market with greatest volume or level of activity right then uh, most advantageous market is the market with the best price for the asset after considering transaction cost so how do we calculate uh, the fair value that is uh, like best price minus transaction cost so the, uh, like this is this method is used just to calculate just to check which is the most advantageous market so uh, like if there are two markets one has uh, price of 100 and then transition cost of 2 but other one has like let's say uh, price of 99 but transition cost of 1 then okay sorry then uh, other one has price of 100 and then transition cost of 1 then here the net cost is 99 so this is the most advantageous for you but the fair value should will be 100 only right <coughs> fair value will only be 100 okay the next point is this although transaction costs are used to determine the most advantageous market the transaction cost is not included in the fair value measurement okay moving on to next slide <clears throat> an orderly transaction cannot be a forced so if, if if a transition is a forced transition that is not considered an order orderly transition then a most advantageous market is used if there is no principal market okay we will not use most advantageous market unless or until we have we have no principal market so like what, what should be the step first step one that principal market you will have to search what is the principal market if no principal market then you will go to most advantageous and then how would you calculate most advantageous market 
that is price minus transaction cost so wherever this is maximum this is highest the price that is fair value would be uh, would be considered the price right the price would be considered as fair value fair value does not include transaction cost but may include transportation cost so tra uh, transportation cost would be included in price like for example that uh, there are two markets uh, but like you have uh, for example you are considering fair value for x market right so uh, you are purchasing an asset that is present in y market then the cost to bring the y mark uh, y market asset to x market is a transportation cost and that should be considered for fair value measurement so fair value would be after deducting this transportation cost right i know this is kind of messy here right? okay then the uh, next point is fair fair value is of a non financial asset assumes the highest and best use of the asset so that is why we consider most work, most uh, advantageous market right so we always assume that fair value of a non financial asset should be considered by highest and best use right so if you have two two market and uh, let, let's say for example there is a land which can be used to uh, build up a building or which can also be used for agriculture purpose so among these also but whatever uh, purpose you serve the highest value of that non financial asset should be considered the fair value right so it is it is not a consideration that uh, you have to only uh, check the market when it is used for building no the uh, highest use highest and best use of asset should be considered the fair value then the next point is highest and best use concept is not relevant when measuring fair value of financial assets so financial assets in financial assets case there are multiple other factors so we do not use the highest and best factors and then the fair value of liability also we do not use highest and best use concept in this as well okay let's solve this question a company owns stock in b company the stock is traded in the new york Ex stock exchange and london stock exchange stock price information from two stock exchange on a particular date is as follows exchange this is quoted stock price then there is transaction cost and then net value a new york exchange and then london exchange what is the fair value of the stock p on the date if there is no principal market for the stock so i have told you the steps like according to step one you'll have to check for principal market right there is no principal market then you'll move to step two where we will check for most advantageous market right what is most advantageous market it should be price minus transaction cost right so for new york sorry new york uh, the price is 103 and transaction cost is one so the net value is 102 but for london uh, the price is 106 and transaction cost is 5 right so the net value was 105 so which out of these is most advantageous so uh, obviously one where you are getting 102 is more value then this is most advantageous market right but the question is not asking about most advantageous market the question is asking the fair value of b stock so what is the fair value the value of the price in most advantageous market that is 103 so our answer in this question should be 103 that is fair value next is fair value measurement framework valuation techniques so there are three methods uh, that are used to measure the fair value one is market approach one is income approach and the other one is last one is the cost approach market approach uses prices and other relevant information from market transactions this is easy then income approach the income approach uh, converts future amounts including cash flows or earnings to a single discounted amount to measure fair value 
it can be applied to assets or liabilities this is uh, like the discounted cash flow technique where we use like we we will uh, for like by purchasing the asset how much cash inflows will you generate in futures and we will discount this to the present value to uh, arrive at the fair value right then the next is cost approach the cost approach uses current replacement cost to measure the fair value of the asset so what would be the replacement cost that is considered to in cost approach hierarchy of inputs so this is important there are three levels of hierarchy first is uh, like where quoted prices so here are three important points are here like quoted prices in active markets for identical assets so to consider like uh, whether a value valuation input is level 1 level 2 or level 3 you, the main focus points are quoted price active market and identical asset so if when all three are present this is level 1 all three are present so then if all of these three are present then it is a level 1 input if any two are present any two let's say uh, there is a quoted price and then in an active market but not of a uh, not of a identical asset it is for a similar asset then it is level 2 input and uh, let's say that there is no quoted price but an, there is an active market of identical asset then also it is a level 2 input right so level 2 inputs is inputs other than quoted market price level 1 that are directly or indirectly observable for the assets and liabilities so whenever you have a question in exams you just check like if all the three are present then it is a highest priority level 1 input if any two are present then it is a uh, second level input if like all other than these two should be considered level 3 inputs so what are level 3 inputs level 3 inputs are unobservable inputs for the assets or liabilities unobservable inputs reflects the reporting entity's assumption and should be based on the best available information best available information after after these two right if we cannot assess the value using level 1 or level 2 then everything else would be following falling under level 3 inputs last is disclosures there are three disclosures we have to make one is valuation technique which technique you have used to value and which level of input you have used then quantitative information about significant unobservable inputs in quantitative information like uh, where where did you get the information from what info uh, whether the information is reliable or not reliability and then the last is discuss, discussion of sensitivity of level 3 measurements uh, sensitivity means how much your value fair fair value of the asset will change due to some uh, changes in unobservable inputs right <clears throat> then there are some exceptions to fair value measurements first is when there is uh, when the calculation of fair value is not when the measurement of fair value is not practicable then uh, it cannot be reasonably determined and then last cannot be measured with sufficient reliability so if the information you have is not reliable then uh, you can you can leave the measurement of fair value and then we can value our asset on some other basis that's it for this topic thank you so much let me know if you have any questions on the comment section and i'll be happy to help thank you